Hi guys, back at the studio. I just thought I'd show you around. Colin was asking in the comments if I was a DJ and like you'll have seen if you've watched like back on the channel, the, you know, on the podcasts and stuff. So just thought I'd show you around the room anyway, bit of a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a bit of my man cave. So, where do we start? Uh, oh, well, for a start, there's the decks. Pioneer controller. Okay, speakers with a camera and a light on top. USBs there. Sticker for the new studio. The B. There's another B somewhere. Uh, some old school GT handlebars. With one of my bikes. This painting here is made from Tattoo Ink Vocal Booth. It's a skateboard someone gave us. Hot Wheels light, which is just unbelievably bright. Some more speakers. This is a wheel table that Jonathan made as a glass top. That's a camera switcher for when we're doing the podcasts. And it's a split rim. It's an image split rim off a Ultima. This, it, I don't think it's off a GTR. I think it's off the Ultima Sport because... To 15, not a 17. I've got like uh, two of those, but different ones not got the tire on. It's just, it's the front wheel and it's the rim. So it's not as deep dished. Sitting on a Ford gearbox. The spacker. Studio lights up there. Both sides of the rim, switch them on. For when we're doing the podcasts. That's one of my GT bike frames. Again, this painting was all tattoo ink. That, that was all tattoo ink mixed with vodka. So it was the one on the back of the door actually. Oh yeah, I carpeted the door. The sound in here is like, oh, you know, it's really flat. It's, it's, it's weird, it's uh, nicely muffled. This stuff here is like for music production. My mate Tati is a music producer and my daughter is a singer. Um, so I kind of set this up so that uh, they could do some but they never really have. Some cameras learn about. Another KRK. The Killer B hat on. Seatage. So this is where we do the podcast. Obviously, someone sits there, someone sits there. Chairs get moved about. There's chairs all over the place. And you can think there's one, two, three, four, five, six chairs. Cube sits there, presses buttons on the switcher while the you know generally we, we rent we rent it out so i don't do many i don't know why like i could do more really but i just don't i don't know i don't but that's kind of what i made it for anyway like it started with like the podcast stuff and uh i, I realized i needed a room to do it because the sound and you know it's it's mad how the, these these microphones here pick up the you know the background noise so i just wanted to make a good environment for it and i thought well if i'm doing that i may as well put the vocal booth in for my daughter and uh, tatty set that up that that corner up there for him to he, he, he does generally kind of well he does all sorts actually but most of his stuff's dance music so that then fits with my thing here so that is can, oh, down there there's a 15 inch sub more speakers the sound in here is crazy when everything's turned on there's another speaker down there speaker there there's a painting under there just covering a load of wires i need to flip it around because that's my favorite end and it's kind of hidden that's just occurred to me amplifier under there so yeah and then up here there's this light which shines at the ceiling you change the colors on it it's mad how it affects the, the paintings on the wall like they all change so yeah it's quite a trippy room really i've just got a like uh, a drum loop on there the silence it's, it's so quiet in here yeah it's so quiet in here that when there's no sound it's really really weird there's a green screen up there as well Never used it yet. Coop says we don't really need it. We don't really need it, may as well chuck it away. It doesn't matter to be honest with you. It spoils the 
everything else is like, you know, I can put a light on. So you can get it quite bright in here as well. So you need those for shining on people's faces. Again, it's mad on camera how things pick up differently. So even with all the lights on, or, I don't know, knock that one off. So that's, that's how we would have it set up. And then you can chuck a bit of backlight by turning that round and direct it down the way onto, onto the sort of, and then there's like camera brackets up there. Actually that's lighting up there. And this is actually a camera bracket as well. And it extends right the way out. Put it above the decks for, uh, if anybody wanted to do a live session. I don't particularly want to do a live session, but not you or all the crackers with all this stuff, you know, like the streaming music and that, because as far as I know, we can get in trouble for it. So this is a Rodecaster Pro 2, fantastic bit of kit. You can run music through it. Uh, it's like a studio quality processors in it. You can run music, you can put a guitar into it, um, but it's primarily designed for, for podcasts. It's all like touch screen and all of these are like special effects or jingles. The microphones are hung up on hooks. Kuba's got that one. And that's the one for the decks. And this here, the One X One, also got it there. I've never done that before. That's weird seeing the two of them together. But yeah, there's a story about that one. I'll tell you about that at the garage. That's the recording studio. I spent a lot of time in here. It's a bolt hole, you know, because it's in, it's in my tattoo studio and I also live upstairs. Yeah, DJ more than, well, sometimes I feel like I don't DJ enough, but I, I, I play quite a lot, record bits and pieces. You know, I, I, I did used to play at the, the festivals and, you know, parties and stuff like that. Did a little bit of nightclubs, but I didn't like it. It's uh, people. I'm saying I don't, used to play at festivals. I played at Solfest last year. I'm not playing this year because we do the videography for Solfest. So we'll cover the full event. Cubes is really busy. Um, it's a, it's it's like absolutely non-stop for I think do four days. I think I think we're there four days. Oh, from the Friday to, from, from the Friday no we're there from the Thursday till the Monday. It's quite a job, and uh, I'm generally kind of running about doing stuff and trying to do all my other stuff as well. So yeah, so I'm 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 not playing this year. So frees up a bit of time which uh, is good because Jordan, who also comes uh, on the camera, he isn't able to make it this year, so I'm gonna have to be doing, doing a bit more filming. I just tend to just fly the drone and get the aerial shots and stuff. Yeah, not playing Solfest this year, but maybe next year. So, th so that's, that's the recording studio anyway, just thought I'd show you around. See you back at the carriage. Oh, I've just heard. D apparently the youngins don't like this thumbs up thing. Apparently it means something else and find it offensive. <laughs> See you later. So kind of blue Peter styly. Here's one we made earlier. The fiberglass is now cured there, there and there. And we're going to flip it back over this way and tackle the back panel again. And, and the sides with it stood up on its end, probably. Cause we could put some, well, yeah, we'll just be like going down to the ground. It'll be stood yeah, on here anyway, yeah, won't it? Yeah, so yeah. I won't make a mess. I won't make a mess. Um, so, here I am with the erm. It's rich from the future. I thought I'd do a talk over on this bit just because it's a bit of a long time lapse. So, just let you know what we're doing. So, we're trimming up edges and taking bolts out, ready for fiberglass and the new the extra layers onto the each panel. And we're going to tackle the full the full rear clam. So obviously first coat of matting, gel, um, paint resin down, matting on top, wet it out, brush it in, roll it in. And so we're getting two layers on each section now so that the whole thing's built up to five layers in total. Obviously, uh, I wish we could work this quick because nothing ever takes as long as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the second layer going on, and 
rolling it in. It's mad how, like, far I do misjudge stuff, how long things are going to take at this, this tank. The clams took a... Ah, I don't know. Obviously I'm not there every day, but it's probably about three weeks I've been working on this. Just the moulding process. So that's the sides going on. The quarter panels. So now, at this stage, like, for me, we have actually taken this mould off. But in, in but I'm rich from the future, aren't I? So like, at the minute, like, I haven't. So I'll have to pretend that I haven't. I'm not seeing anything. So yeah, it's quite, quite therapeutic, like, the rolling part of it. I, I like the sound it makes. But, with resin going off on you and that, it's, it's still quite stressful. You see, you, you, when you first first start with it, you're like, I don't know, in panic mode sometimes, you know, when you've got complex shapes and that, because you, you're expecting it to go off. This stuff doesn't go off too fast, but it it lets you sort of know. Um, goes like chewing gum. So that's the sides done. And now uh, just taking bolts out for and then sand and they give it a bit of sand over with 80 grit just to take all the nibs off and give it a bit of a key look at that team worker Jonathan wearing his PPE And I'm like out of the way. More resin. Obviously we've cut the sheets to to shape and then lay it in, trim off any floppy edges. You want a bit extra because you don't know how far it's gonna stretch in. Mixing some more resin. Seem to go more, through more than the recommended amount just by the, the quite big mixes, but tend to need a little bit more than what the they say. So we're worried about these bits locking and uh, getting a hold of the, the body not being able to release properly. So I'll show you what happened in a future video. That's the top bit doing. I'll be back in a second. Doesn't that look cool? Smart out forms of shape in it. Right, that's as finished the mould for the clam. Well, all the all the fiberglassing we've still got to drill the holes and trim the edges. But apart from that, that's that done. So it's Monday, I'm not back till Thursday. That'll be cured by then. So the next video, we're gonna be taking the rear clam out of the mould, so that should be interesting. And then I'll be getting on to we're not gonna jump straight onto the moulds for the for the front end. I'm gonna Put the vents in, uh, the bonnet, the bumper, the rear clam, so that we can get a, a, a picture of it in the next like, bit of time. I'm just going to spend getting it ready so we can get a photograph of it and then uh, pop the mould uh, off the rear clam next video and start putting the, the meshes into the, the bonnet and the bumper and the rear clam. So that's what we're doing next time. So thanks for watching, subscribing, comments and sharing and all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>